I'd like to start by acknowledging that we are all meeting today on a variety of traditional and unceded territories across this beautiful province. I'm currently on the traditional and unceded territory of the uh, Kwantlen and Katsi First Nations. And you can hear that, that little hitch. I almost said kakite because I spend a great deal, probably at least half of my time, uh, on the traditional and unceded territory of the Kakite First Nation as well, which is where I work. Um, and I'm very grateful to be able to work, learn, live and play on these beautiful unceded and traditional territories. So welcome everyone to our, uh, our conference. Um, I'm going to quote something that I read in the chat just a few seconds ago by Christopher Hunt. Um, and he has written, you folks rocked. That was a fast bounce back from chaos. We rise, right? From the ashes, tales rise. And that really encompasses um, our theme this year. We have been dealt a number of, um, of blows <laughs> as, uh, as a profession, right? And certainly as TLs. And so um, I have been so, so grateful and so impressed with the number of times that, um, that we have all been knocked down and, uh, and come back. And so right now, I just want everybody to acknowledge themselves as well for doing all of that. Um, and uh, as I, I sort of mentioned before, if anybody heard me, um, our, our conference has been um, a bit of a collaborative effort, but, uh, you know, Joseph Jeffrey and uh, Jennifer Fox have really taken the helm and done a tremendous amount of work. Um, so I just really want uh, us all to, to acknowledge them right now. Yes, absolutely. This could not have happened um, without their work. Uh, hours and hours and hours. Um, and uh, it's not lost on me that uh, Joseph was the one who uh, who said right away, oh, wait, shouldn't have posted that on social media. Um, I was naive enough to think this morning that, uh, oh, well, let's just take advantage of that. So um, in uh, recognizing time, what I'm going to do is hand this over to Joseph to let everybody know a few um uh, housekeeping pieces and to introduce our keynote speakers. Thank you. Okay, welcome everyone. So at the end of this, depending on uh, what happens, um, I will either be posting a link to a Google Doc, which will contain all the Zoom links. We ask that you try to remember remember what you had signed up for and go to it. We do also have one additional um, uh, schedule change. Unfortunately, one of our um, uh, presenters also had a medical emergency this morning and um, is not able to join us today. So if you were going to be going to cashing in on the knowledge economy, that session has been cancelled. Uh, if you didn't already know under the sink, uh, was cancelled earlier this week as well due to unforeseen circumstances. We hope both presenters um, will be able to join us for future um, conferences, but um, for now, that's uh, how it is. I have the um, document ready to go and I'll post it at the end of this. So let us get started with our keynote. I would like to welcome all of you I am speaking today from the unceded traditional territory of the Clayton Tene, and we have three fabulous uh, teacher librarians from across the province. We've tried to give you a sense of the whole province by having Keely Thornton coming to you from the island, Devika Chudi, uh, Chudi, uh, coming from uh, the lower mainland, and Marilyn Lund coming from the interior. These three together will be our keynote. They are three longtime fabulous members of the BCTLA, um, and they are going to be the people that will uh, be bringing you into our meeting today. So be prepared to rise for our three phoenixes. <laughs> Thank Ooh, you, Joseph. Phoenix. <laughs> Pretty sexy. Yeah. No, too soon, Dev, too soon. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, a reminder as Dev shares her screen, if um, you are relatively new to Zoom or, or haven't fiddled with this right now, um, you could hit escape on your, on your computer keyboard and you'll see us all pop up, up at the top so you can see our fabulous slides in their entirety. 
Thanks, Keely. So um, I think you're all aware we're being recorded. Just wanted to give you that disclaimer. So if you don't want to be recorded, just leave your camera off. Um, so we're gonna do some introductions. So uh, I'm Duvika, I like to go by Dev. Uh, Chetty. I work at Goldmears Elementary in Maple Ridge, BC, which is here in the Lower Mainland. I have been a teacher for 20 years, 10 years of which I've been a teacher librarian. Um, seven of those, um, I had imposter syndrome because I felt I wasn't qualified. So I recently finished my master's with Joseph and Emily and a bunch of other fabulous TLs. And uh, so uh, now I don't feel quite as much as an imposter, but, um, you know, if you are new to the library and you are not sure because you don't have that background yet, if you're passionate and you're an advocate for literacy for your school communities, then you're in the right place. This is this is the session for you. My name is Keely Thornton. Uh, I'm over in Victoria on the island and at Monterey Middle School. I have been part um, of the conferences now for 15 years, I think, uh, both hosting organizing, conference coordinator, all sorts of different things, because I love, love, love conferences. I always so appreciate that we as TLs take the time to come from all over the province to see each other, uh, to meet up and to exchange ideas. We get such rich, amazing things out of these conferences. So I'm so thrilled that you were able to join us all and hope that we can see each other in person next year. And I'm Marilyn Lund. I'm a teacher librarian in the Kootenays and have been doing this um, for a number of years, have been with the BCTL, Woot Woot, for um, as long as I can remember from when I first started. And it's the peeps that are in this community that really help to support and allow us to rise up at those occasions when we may need help or when we can share light or any other kind of um, expertise with others. Let's go, girls. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start with a, a disclaimer. We're about to do a participant challenge because we want you guys to actually get a little bit involved, uh, be a little inspired. Prizes are on the line. So I'm going to give you the instructions. Please do not jump ahead. <laughs> I'm about to show the instructions. Do not start until I actually say go. Our participant challenge is think of a book that is currently sitting on your bookshelf at home or at school or hidden in a drawer that you would be too embarrassed to even donate to the little free library. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go and find it and you're gonna to have to come back with it and show it on your camera. So that means you will have to turn on your cameras briefly and you also need to actually use the reaction and raise your hand. So not physically, but actually use the little icon to raise your hand because it will keep track. The first 10 people to show a truly embarrassing book will receive a free DCTLA t-shirt. They're pretty awesome. I got one. I know Marilyn's wearing one. Keely, you wearing one too? Yeah, so. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we got we got lots of awesome t-shirts here. Uh, disclaimer, the shirts may not actually fit you, but maybe you can <laughs> give them to someone who does. All right, are you guys ready? On your marks, get set, go. Maybe stop well, sharing. Like your book is a little inappropriate after what yeah, happened this morning. Yeah, mine is definitely. I know. <laughs> I'm like too soon. Maybe stop sharing your um, screen for just a sec, Dev. Sounds like a good plan. Let's do that. And we can see. Oh yeah, we've got Jesse, Darcy. We got to see that book, Darcy. You got to turn on the screen. The little old lady who broke the rules. Oh, just got a gift the mask on. of the day, Darcy. <laughs> Might be too awesome. soon after this morning. <laughs> Gulps. <laughs> Position of the day. Nice, Darcy. Uh, I'm not sure who and Bord. Librarian <laughs> Kelly. What is that? <laughs> you Roberts. What's your title? I hope Joseph's taking pictures. <laughs> oh, oh yes, that's what we all look like for sure. Where really yeah, went? <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Uh, let's see. Oh, Christopher Hunt has. The mime alphabet book. Ooh, disturbing. Okay. <laughs> Kelly, what, what's, what have you got there? Lindsay Sands, you've a definitely day in the life got... of a librarian. Oh, I see. Oh, that is that is like supernatural fiction, though. I I do love a supernatural romance. Oh, and I don't know if it's D. Ross or Dross, but ladies, um, uh, oh oh, ladies own erotica. Ooh. And Morgan oh has. 
be a perfect person in just three days. <laughs> oh, and that's a goal for all of us, isn't it? <laughs> Let's see. We've got two more, right? Difficult teachers. Oh, 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 okay. There's like a weapons on the front of that. <laughs> it looks like Diana has with difficult teachers. Got it. Something to do with immortals. <laughs> um, so Joseph, did you get the first 10? He's 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 our official um recorder for this, so that we actually make sure you guys get your prizes. Yes, I did. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody. Uh yes. Embarrassing books abound for sure. Uh, so we're glad that you can go and and track one down. That's hilarious. Thank you so much, everybody, for our fun little um, start there. So I'm going to share my screen again. So I am going to start uh, with talking about um, a little bit of our realities right now in the library. Uh, as I'm sure you are all aware, TLs are very overworked even before COVID. Uh, we had limited staffing, limited time in the li uh, library learning commons, limited resources. Now, the burnout is very real. We've had to try to scramble and adapt to all the different situations that have come up because of COVID, uh, trying to maintain our library programs in some format or another. Um, with things lightening up this year, we're getting a little bit more flexibility, but there's still a lot of restrictions and it makes it really difficult for us to um, keep those programs going and maintaining our connection with our staff and students. Uh, on top of that, we're not necessarily being covered by TTOCs when we finally actually succumb to illness or when we wanna try and do professional development. Um, we're even being pulled to cover other teachers and it starts to feel like our library programs aren't necessarily respected or valued. So if you are one of those people, <laughs> which I feel like a lot of us are at some point, um, you are being heard, you are in a very safe group right now. We are here for you. So um, we are going to try and inspire you uh, because we want to try and rebuild those damaged programs and maybe go back to what we were doing before or maybe even shake things up and go on and maybe try something new, something better. So we're gonna start with creating an inviting space and engaging your school community. So to start with, we have lots of clubs that you can potentially be doing. Now, I want to remind everyone that we are just going to be giving you suggestions. This is by no means a checklist that you need to go through. Every teacher librarian is unique and has their own passions. Um, now, these are some of the suggestions that Keely or Marilyn or myself have done. Um, but by all means, you may go another route. Uh, if technology is your passion, you may want to do coding or you might uh, want to do maker spaces. Uh, for us, we uh, have some examples here and if you want to learn more specifics about this when we do our workshop later we'll get into more detail uh, some of the groups that we have i'm starting a rainbow club this year in my library so um, our sexual orientation and gender identity students uh, wherever they are on the spectrum we got a lot of gender fluid and questioning students in my school right now so we were asked could we start a, a gender sexuality alliance so yeah, I, the, when you're being asked, I, the need is clearly there. And what a great way to connect with our really needy kids who maybe are not getting support elsewhere. Uh, some other things might be running a game club. And the best part about that is you don't even necessarily need to run it. You're literally just providing the space, maybe the resources, and the kids get to come in and have this great connection with the library, have a good time, and if you're like a super board gaming uh, nerd like myself, and I'm going to throw Joseph out there because I know he is too, um, then this is a great club for you to be able to run as well. Um, but, uh, for the graphic novel club, we know, I know there's a lot of TLs and don't necessarily in, enjoy graphic novels, but it is a growing field. I personally love them. The kids love them, and it's a great way to connect with your struggling and reluctant readers. Um, so manga is huge right now. If you have a graphic novel club with your kids, I can guarantee they'll probably have some of those kids that you would never expect in the library learning commons to show up. 
Uh, Marilyn actually does something pretty cool. She does a debate club. And Marilyn, did you want to speak to that? You know, Fridays after school when it's uh, three o'clock and everybody is uh, gone to the pub to have, you know, a nice will for the end of the week. I'm with my kids, my peeps till about 6 p.m. because they want to be with each other with the debate club. And, you know, it's a safe space. It's a big space. So I can put them in all different parts of the library. Um I think between like the Soji Club and gaming and graphic novels and all of those things that uh, Devika mentioned, um, we provide the opportunity for kids to be in um, a safe sp space. And really, that's what they want. Um, literacy is obviously another major goal of most of our learning library commons. So um, extracurricular reading programs are amazing. I wasn't able to do it last year, and I know the students were really disappointed. Uh, I do a program called Book Fest with my district. Um, Keely does Battle of the Books with her middle school kids. Uh, there's even uh, a program that runs here in the Fraser Valley that works with the public libraries and the school libraries for Reading Link Challenge. Um, I did not expect it to be, as, like I knew the kids wanted to join things and do things again, but when I opened up Book Fest uh, for this year, I had 80 kids sign up and the, I couldn't even hold, host them in the library because of COVID restrictions. I had to take them to the multi-purpose room and it was just so crazy filled, but they were so excited to be able to do something again. Uh, we have weekly meetings. So they bring their lunches. We do uh, cahoots on different book titles. So like for our district, we had teacher librarians choose eight titles. And then from there, uh, we have regular meetings. We're gonna have poster contests. We're having a big finale event. Um, we couldn't do in person this year, so we're gonna be doing a virtual one. So I'll be hosting and emceeing that. And we're gonna do a massive cahoot for all the schools to compete at in their own locations. Um, it's still gonna have a costume parade. So the kids are gonna have a chance to showcase um, themselves dressed up as their favorite characters. And we like to give away uh, prizes, of course, as well. Like we know, <laughs> that's why some of you guys are here right now. Prizes are key. So wonderful ways to connect with your students. Um, of course, there's also special events. So for me, I like to actually do something uh, for Halloween because it is my favorite holiday. All my students know they actively seek me out for Halloween because they know something spectacular is going to happen. I actually shut down the library for the day. There's no book exchange. And I create a haunted library. And we're talking about hours of work the day before after school and we set up this amazing, creepy, like truly scarring experience. I do make children cry and I'm glad of it because I know that they'll remember it forever. Ah, <laughs> Deb, the queen of making children cry. <laughs> that's right. Um, but they remember it and they love it and they come back every year. And even our grade sevens who you would think would be too cool to like come and see a, a little elementary haunted library. They love it. And now I've actually started getting my students to come and participate. So we can't do it this year because of COVID, but I've had kids trained to do jump scares. And so when the kids come through, they are screaming and terrified. I've actually broken some black light, light balls because kids have like flailed and knocked things over. Um, Marilyn does something pretty cool in her library. She does um, career and university planning days with her secondary students. Yeah. So. While we have um, lots of um, fun kind of uh, much more um, dress up day kind of uh, situations, we also have the opportunity to have outside people come in and um, showcase what um, they do in their own careers and then have the kids actually do their own um, boards in um, the library set up all around to be able to have a look at, you know, hey, I'm going to be um, a vet, I'm going to do this kind of thing. And then there's much more uh, coordination between um, mentors as well as people who come from um, outside the school and then mingle with kids. So it's a great opportunity to showcase all of those kinds of things at a secondary level. Uh, another opportunity is on Valentine's Day. You don't necessarily want to do the Valentine's cards tradition. Well, do love your school library day. Um, just 
is different depending on the schools. You might have special bookmarks that kids get to color and decorate. Um, I do a poster contest and um, give prizes to um, the best primary and intermediate um, artists. And of course the messages are very important as well. They have to show their appreciation for either reading or particular authors or particular series, but something to show that they really do love reading and have that connection uh, there as well. And another way to connect with our students and staff is free books. Everybody loves free books. It is insane. The stampede of people that I will get running to the library when they hear that I'm giving away free books. It's a great feeling. It's a little concerning. <laughs> you worry someone might get trampled, but it is amazing. Um, so when I weed my books, my school has learned that I don't just recycle them even though they're probably a little worn or a little bit dated. I will actually create a parade of books in the school hallway. And so the books are all laid out so they can see each title on, e on either side of the hallway. And then the teachers bring their kids around and they're allowed to take uh, one or two books initially. And then at the end of the day, whatever's left is a free for all. And that way I don't have to haul all those extra books to the recycling. It's just a small amount that I have to take and Great, everyone gets free books. Who's, who doesn't feel good about that, right? Uh, there's also International Book Giving Day also on Valentine's Day. So I can have kids come in and they um, will bring gently used books and they get to do a, basically a big book swap. So it's books that maybe they've grown out of but are still in really great condition and super popular and they just kind of gift them on to the next person. And we also talk about giving them to charities so that other people in our community as a whole can also have access to free reading, which is really important. Uh, right now, really, this feels particularly um, salient is that we are trying to ensure that our school libraries and our school community are really um, respecting and representing diverse perspectives. So uh, you, I'm sure, have been really working hard on developing your collections, um, making sure that that's there, but maybe your staff and students don't know that you put all this effort in. So let's make a beautiful display about it. Um, traditionally, we've celebrated Christian uh, holidays like Christmas and Easter. So uh, currently I'm trying to do better and actually put out books uh, every month that are other faiths. Um, as well, we have um, displays specifically about different social justice issues. So it might be about women's rights, or maybe we wanna just Make sure that our people with disabilities are being represented better. Um, acknowledging that immigrants are a very important part of our story. Um, with the Truth and Reconciliation um, Week that we just recently had, really pushing forward Indigenous rights, uh, human rights as a whole. And of course, we have many special months and days to celebrate uh, all those pieces as well. Um, we have um, Black History Month, we have Pink Shirt Day to deal with bullying. Um, we have uh, LGBTQ2S uh, plus pride. Uh, you can even do something as simple as celebrating poetry in April or uh, choosing your favorite authors. I know some people like to celebrate Dr. Seuss's birthday. What fun way to do that with your kids, dress up as your favorite characters. And of course, um, we need to create fun displays for those themes. So uh, Joseph is gonna put this link in the chat. This is our next participant challenge. You're gonna go to the link that's um, gonna be in the chat and you're gonna share after, your favorite- After the keynote. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the keynote. Um, Not just, in this moment. Just, yeah. <laughs> we want I you to stay with us. <laughs> yeah. Click on the link so that it opens up and then you can like deal with it later so you don't like lose it in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so you're gonna share your favorite display or theme you've created in your library learning commons. And then the best part is that this file is accessible to everyone afterwards. So you can review these ideas and see if there's like a particular theme or idea that maybe you wanna use in your library learning commons. Um, I know we've got fantastic people here like uh, Emily, she does such beautiful things and she shares it on social media and you just be totally inspired by all the work that goes into there. That's a little bit out of my league. I don't have as much time to do that as maybe Emily does, but I might be able to borrow little pieces of that. So anyways, hopefully this document will help you guys get some great ideas and make some really memorable and amazing displays. Um, so I noticed in the chat while, while Deb was talking that, that a few people were asking about FTE and we acknowledge that our FTEs are 
so vast and so different all around this province. Uh, I worked at an elementary school where I was there one day a week, and there was not a lot I felt that I could do at that school. And yet, there are some things that you can do and little nuggets you can take in. We still tried to do a book, a fun book um, week where we gave away free books and things like that. And sometimes that just means arranging your schedule a little bit differently because taking care of yourself and taking care of your school is something I think uh, librarians do regardless. And sometimes we overwork ourselves a little bit because our FTEs are not great. Uh, but this is also one of those advocacy pieces to show what we can do and what more we could be doing if we had larger FTEs. So I think those little little great fun things that you can put in is always going to be helpful for your advocacy. So taking even just one or two little things that we're, we're throwing at you today and, and going away with some inspiration to do something fun would be great. Um, my other big point and the one that I'm going to talk about is taking care of yourself by taking care of your staff. We work in a school. Often we are the only ones in our school as teacher librarians. And we are in a very unique position. I often feel like the teacher librarians are the bartenders of the school. Have you ever had people as staff members just circulate into the library, stand in front of your desk and sort of unload all of what's going on with them? And we we're in that position because we have an open, inviting, amazing space and people are drawn to that, drawn to talking with us as teacher librarians because we know all the connections and we know what's going on. Um, so taking care of your staff is incredibly important. Um, reaching out, making those connection, connections and we are in a unique position to do that. Uh, at my school, um, supporting staff members, especially in need is something that I really strongly believe in because it always makes me feel better when I'm able to help somebody who might be in need as well. It might not be the case for everybody, but that's one of the things I take away with. We have the Sunshine Fund. We have uh, little support gifties that can go out if you need some help, our retirement gifties, all of our other things that um, can help out staff. This particular picture, um, as some of you may know, I went through cancer uh, three years ago, four years ago. And while I was in chemo, uh, my staff members all raided my back room and got all the wigs that were in the costume areas and a few from home put them all on and sent me this photo uh, while I was at chemo. And of course, they're just such jerks about it because they made me cry uh, in the middle of chemo, but it was so lovely and so heartwarming. And that is one of the reasons why I like to give back to them as well, because I know they've got my back as well. Uh, I also have the drawer of life. Now, some of you might have this or might have a little um, a, an area where you keep some treats and goodies and candy and chocolate. And this is um, my way of bribing you to get into the library because I actually don't really like sweets. So I fill it all up. Um, there is a little bit of a warning that it might be expired, but it's there for you to, to come in. And the fee, of course, is then chatting with me. So it's my way of kind of bribing you to get into the library. And then uh, I hit you with Oh, what are you doing in your in your class right now? How are you doing? Are you feeling okay? That sort of stuff um, to help get the support and those connections that are so crucial. So I would highly recommend a drawer of life. Uh, during the pandemic, I wanted to bring some fun to my staff um, to help us stay connected because I was feeling really unconnected, um, especially being the teacher librarian, um, I didn't feel like I had a big role. So my role, of course, just became the social person, which is always my role, but you know, step it up in the pandemic. Uh, we would have Tuesday night beer clubs at 8.30 at night uh, and a bunch of our staff would join. It always ended up turning into a whole bunch of people changing their faces on uh, Facebook Messenger, but it was great. Um, and it's such a nice way to still stay connected. Uh, music. Bingo we used to do over Zoom. Uh, I even hosted one a couple weeks ago and it was both a little disheartening because I, I, you know, put a lot of effort into it and we had four people show up 
three of whom were no longer on our staff, but just wanted to come back and enjoy the fun. Uh, but it, it was nice to see that people were actually out and doing things again. So we may not need so many of these connecting pieces uh, over Zoom anymore and hopefully in person. And then, of course, our trivia night, uh, sometimes with Kahoot last night. Thank you to all of those who were able to join us to have some fun with trivia at the social last night. I love um, doing trivia and getting people connected that way. So you can. You can see the picture down below is my staff doing YMCA on for one of our music bingos. <laughs> um, costumes, costumes, costumes. I am the costume queen at my school. Uh, and As am I, I. <laughs> unfortunately always make my staff dress up for everything. And no matter what it is we're doing down below, there is us uh, doing curling at Christmas. Uh, I highly recommend you taking on another school in curling because nobody knows how to, well, I shouldn't say nobody knows how to curl. Lots of people know how to curl, uh, but most of us don't. And so it is a hoot. Uh, it's so much fun to, to have people doing that. And then I always make sure that the teams have to dress in a coordinated costume. As well at Christmas, I always do a huge um, uh, scavenger hunt with all of my staff and you of course have to be in teams it's outside and running around all around downtown that is my principal in the middle of the one on the left uh he's jewish and wanted to go as the dreidels so they put their little dreidel signs on and now they're linking arms and and spinning all around the uh city so it's always everybody has to be involved including admin so we have all sorts of fun in our costumes one of the things, though, I do want to say with, with costumes, um, I end up providing a lot. Uh, and I know I noticed somebody in, in the thing mentioned about budget. This is just my own. I try, you know, I happen to have a lot. People give me a lot. I do a lot of thrift store um, hopping. So please don't feel like you need to be spending your budget on things like this. But it is um, one of my passions. And all of our passions are going to be, of course, different. Uh, yeah, the drama teacher may have some funds for something like this. And it is wonderful to have buy-in, staff buy-in for the wacky days at school. So you might have crazy hair, a crazy hat day. And if you are the person who your staff can suddenly run in in the morning and go, oh, my God, I forgot my hat today. Do you have a hat I can wear? I can pop that on their head. Uh, and it really is a great buy-in for both support of the staff and support of the school. Uh, that's us on the right for Decades Day. Uh, that's me, of course, in my Backstreet Boys t-shirt because I am a child of the 90s and uh, a couple of my colleagues. And then there's a bunch of my staff members at Halloween because we always do a massive Halloween uh, project. Uh, Deb as well. I uh, did a superheroes day and her staff members dress up. Marilyn did a, does a Jersey day where <laughs> you said everybody dresses in a Jersey pretty well. Don't you, Marilyn? Up at, at, at secondary school. And I love the simple ones like giant glasses day or novelty glasses day. It's one that can be easy and, and fun for that. As well, I usually, um, most teachers will know if there are some students who would love to um, be part of this, but might not financially be able to. And it's great for us as TLs to be able to make those connections and maybe have a little stash for a few students who would love to participate, but might not be able to otherwise. So, And Prodi and Fun Places is often a great way to get connections with your staff and get them out of the school, break them out of the norm, and get them to have some fun. So um, we are very fortunate, of course, on the island here to have beautiful locations to have some of our Prodi that's all down at the beach, um, learning about the native uh, waterways that are down there and how we can do some protection with our students to help um, clean up the waterways that are running to the ocean. Uh, the GAF, I love this picture down below. This was at the actual GAF conference. I wasn't even there and they dressed up just because they were like, we have to send Keely a picture of us dressing up. So it was nice to have at a GAF conference representing and it was awesome. Uh, and in the top corner, a couple of my, um, my French teachers and I pooled our pro resources and we actually went out to Carnival in Quebec City. And it was 
the most unbelievable pro D and has solidified us as uh, colleagues for life now because we were able to share something really magical together. So I encourage a lot of that. Community building is huge. And with your staff, those are your people. You need to feel as though you have support in your school. Um, so building those bridges and gentle reminders. Um, these are these are our people. And you might have be able to have some fun uh, TL people as well in our district. And because we are just the single ones, sometimes it takes a little effort to get us all together to be doing some fun things. Pop Corner is all of our TLs who participate in the book battle. And um, we have so much fun going and planning that book battle, usually at the pub, and um, making sure that we we have those connections. Down below, Dev, uh, that's your TL crew from Maple Ridge, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, With so we matching have matching shirts. Yeah, we designed the shirts because, of course, I'm a teacher librarian. What's your superpower? Like, we're all superheroes. We are. What we do matters and is so important to our communities. And building those bonds. Yep, there they are, ladies. Looking good. Building those bonds with your TL crew. The support needs to be there because as Keely and Marilyn have said, like, we can be quite isolated in our positions. So having someone else to be able to go and say, have you been pulled from your job again today to go cover a classroom? Like, does it feel like you're being pulled all the time? Like, it's nice to be able to talk to somebody who understands your frustrations. Absolutely. And Marilyn, of course, having some other connections with uh, staff and students and authors, even being able to, to connect them all during the pandemic was pretty amazing. Yeah, that's Monique Polak from um, Montreal. If any of you want a fantastic individual to participate and build your community with um, someone across the country, wow, she does a great job. She kept our kids involved for an hour and a half, and she was only booked for 45 minutes, and the questions kept coming. So building that community, connecting with staff in other places, huge. Um, I just noticed in the chat, somebody asked about the hoodies um, that actually because uh, Devika had designed this one, um, she she had those hoodies made up for her LSA. But I would imagine if you are meeting with your LSAs, your, your teacher librarian associations in each of your districts, you could talk about using some funds to to maybe create a design and purchase um, some hoodies or some I have this design. You don't even need to make it. I can just forward it to you if you ask me nicely. That would be lovely, Deb. <laughs> so if you would like to, to do this one or even coming up with your own to support your district and to show your love for PLs in your district, that would be a great way to stay connected. So we keep talking about all the need to be able to connect with different people, um, our kids, our staff. Um, so in that context, you know, as drained as we are, and the fact that as we come into the school, the energy that we're able to reestablish over the summer, uh, the rejuvenation, all of those kinds of things that we come back fresh, I've noticed with um, our pandemic protocols and everything else, that um, ability to keep that rejuvenation um, doesn't quite last as long as it did before. And so, you know, we need to think the best way to navigate um, all of these new fires that we've had to face and um, pull the best from what we have from the resulting ashes. And I know that um, sometimes the best way to be able to connect with your colleagues in the library is to forward both, you know, your, your weekly, monthly, daily, uh, yearly planning. So let's take a look at maybe ways to connect on that. It's one of the vehicles that is our Piesta resistance and the reason that we drive um, our library learning commons. So let's think about what Johann Wolfgang von Goethe said um, when the old one is burned out, one is going to rise from the ashes. And I love the way Joseph and Jennifer were able to rise from the ashes this morning because, whoa, there's a great example of pivoting and um, providing the opportunity for us to still maintain our engagement. This engagement here is our Indigenous support worker giving us a song and an intro and a drumming at the very beginning of school. And it was so refreshing for all of us to be together, face to face, outside, 
it was the connection we'd been waiting for for a long time. So that collaboration piece, when we look at uh, what it looks like, um, there's nothing, nothing that we want to do more than to be able to have a chance to then to connect with staff. So um, how are we going to be able to move forward in that uh, when you work in your own little silo? Because as the pandemic protocols have been put in place, we've been put in our own spaces with our own cohorts. And of course, that's broken up apart. I don't know how many of you have masking tape sticky glue still on your floor because it's all over the place. And I, those custodians are working their hearts out um, to be able to um, clean it all up and get us back to um, being able to mingle. So, um, when we're working in our own little silo, and we've done that a lot over the past year, you know, really, we've missed our connections, uh, those walking down the hall conversations. And I'm not sure about how many of you undergo this, but as a TL, I'm walking down, all of a sudden, somebody goes, hey, I'm coming down um, after lunch. How can we make uh, use of the databases to be able to research murder hornets? You want your whole class to do um, murder hornets? And, and so then it's like, in the moment, okay, I'm going to get going on this, figure out how we're going to um, make this work. So if you're new to teaching, sometimes tired of old ideas, need something new, oh, how about that panic? They've taken the course away that you thought you were going to teach and you were going to prep and had prepped all summer and uh, hashtag pivot gave you a different one come see us. You know what? Sometimes it's just the opportunity to do brainstorming, spitballing that crazy idea that you think might work, and then have somebody else with you go, hey, let's, let's do this. Let's find a way to make it work. Suddenly, there's energy. There's the opportunity to go, I don't have to do this by myself. I've got someone else on board that's going to um, provide that extra bit of oomph to keep me going. So um, I think the bigger part of all of this is that, yeah, you know, that idea percolates in the back of our head. Uh, we have amazing passion to make it happen, but sometimes the energy just goes <sighs> because, you know, our reality check kind of hits us and we go, like, I can't do this by myself. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to forget about it. And you know, it's those middle of the night ideas that everybody kind of has and, and wakes up in the morning and goes, I can't do that. And then it's like, oh, I'm only point two. I have this on my plate. They've been pulling me. Wait a minute. How can I make this work with more bodies and make more connections to see that this can go forward? So I, I'm a big um, promoter of pre-planning to some degree. Um, and then, you know what, creating that, that lovely landing space for great ideas to flourish. Uh, it may be you. It may be that you connect with um, another person and say, hey, I'm not the expert in this field, but I do know someone that um, loves to do this. Let's, let's get the two of you together and maybe you can uh, make it happen in another way. Take your colleagues, bring them on board, make those connections. It's the kind of joie de vivre that we need right now to be able to um, get, get us excited, get us wanting to go forward. Okay, so the other thing that I really want you to do is make sure um, that you are kind to yourself. Because if you are one person on this journey, it is, it's exhausting. And we've had lots of um, changes. We've had that hashtag pivot constantly thrown at us. This week, we're wearing masks. Next week, we're not wearing masks. Wait a minute, we got to put those masks back on. And I don't know how many of you have said above the nose, under the chin. And I have high school students. It's like, okay, come on, you guys. We're in this together. Um, yeah, so, middle schoolers are the worst, but they're <laughs> kind of the worst anyway. So, you know, it's on the part. is perfect. There's no issues ever. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I think about all of those kinds of things. It's okay to take some time to step back and go, okay, I, I, I need a little bit of this to make this happen. Um, and so then with that collaboration with your teachers, that whole 
um, ability to move us forward in a way that's going to keep us healthy is going to be there as well. So like that phoenix, we've talked about winging our way through the skies, like this morning, getting on Zoom, <laughs> let's rise and revive from the ashes and let's be together, healthy, happy, kind to each other, connecting with all of our colleagues. So we actually have um, hopefully a little time to do some Q&A here though. Is that right? I don't, like I know we're a little bit I have just been time. seeing such rich yes, conversations. Um, come. We have time for that. We do have time. Uh, I've been seeing such rich conversations, comments, uh, people adding into the chat. It's amazing. I love this format in certain ways because we're sort of talking at you, but I, I'm getting distracted by all of your amazing ideas, um, how you want to connect um, people saying, hey, join me on, on Twitter so that we can have all of these connections. This is exactly what we do. And this is exactly what we're talking about. Teacher librarians are connections and we will rise to any occasion and this is what I'm seeing uh, as well, helping each other out uh, with, with um, making those connections for our staff, our students, and our schools. Uh, does anybody have any specific questions for us? Oh, <laughs> wait, we've got to, we, we have to pause for a moment. Javika's <laughs> giant hair. <laughs> I'm about to end the slideshow so we can do the questions. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, this is a picture that I made at work because I felt that... Um, we were having a mural painted and I really felt that I should be in the mural and my principal wasn't quite getting my vision. So I created this. And so it's on all my devices. My kids know that this is mine. And yes, I ride Eagles on the weekend and yes, my hair was that long. So, <laughs> so we may not be riding a Phoenix, but on the wings of Eagles, we rise. <laughs> so I'm going to stop the presentation now so that we can fully pull up the chats and um, delve into some questions. Right. Um. Feel free to unmute yourself uh, as well, and and maybe raise your hand. Question or raise your hand if if you'd like to chat about anything more. Or not, we could just chat some more. <laughs> You're sharing your Twitter handles. What a great idea uh, to be able to copy and paste them directly into your accounts right away. Um, it's a, a feature of Zoom that now is available that when we first started, do you remember that? You try to copy and paste things and it, <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now it does. And, and I just want to remind, um, like we said before, that this might not be like, we, we seem like we're doing a lot. We're, we're picking and choosing the things to tell you about as well. The things that, as we said before, that we're passionate about. So each of us is coming with a little bit of different things to the table here. And if you're only pulling one or two things that you want to try this year at, that's great. Um, and making sure to make, even we said talking with collaboration with our staff, making a connection with one teacher for that first year, especially if you're a new teacher, just really connecting with one teacher to help collaborate within their classroom and really develop your skills with collaboration is key. Don't try and take on collaboration with the whole staff. Um, you're always going to have some staff members that just are those people that don't really want to collaborate with you. And that is can be difficult sometimes. Sometimes you can feel a little like, oh, they don't want to be in the library. They don't want to be with me. And I, I don't want you to take that personally. That find the people who help boost you up. And those other ones will come to you when they see the amazing work that you're doing with one or two of your colleagues in your school, they'll come to you. And then you don't have to feel like you're trying to force them into something that they might not necessarily want to do. So find your few people that you can do some really amazing collaboration with and the work will speak for itself. Absolutely. Um, two things, uh, Jennifer, there is a BCTF calendar um, you can see it back there up on the wall that actually does showcase all of the different things that are available on a monthly and daily basis um, that are specific to our particular province. So that's um, something that you might want to have a look at. See your um, 
local um, rep and hopefully they'll have access to it or go to the um, BCTF website. It should be there as well. And um, secondly, Ruth, um, thank you for the question about um, supporting Literacy 12. You know what? That's been an amazing journey that I've had with um, our vice principal over the last couple of years because we've taken kids um, from their um, natural kind of um, environment where we've said, you know, there's no more final exams. Uh, you're going to do your exam in your classroom where it's where you're comfortable. It's not going to be more than an hour long. And then suddenly we've parachuted them into these classrooms where now that the exam is three hours long and here are the different charts and kinds of things that you need to be able to uh, interpret in order to come up with your responses. And so, uh, Ruth, yes, let's um, connect because there's been a couple of ways that we've done it as um, a team within our school. And most of the exams actually happen within our library because we have the large screens to be able to uh, book the kids in and to have multiple windows open on the same time. For example, their, um, the chart that they need to interpret with um, their responses over on a, on a separate window on another page. And those kinds of things, as, as simplistic as they seem at the um, mechanics level, need to be addressed. And then it's the actual uh, digging deeper within the actual uh, information that's included on the literacy exam that we want to prep the kids to be able to be successful with. Because lots of them go into it going, hey, I haven't done this since grade eight. Like, oh, I, I can't remember. Well, those kinds of things need to be refreshed. And so, yes, um, I'm thinking that that's a great question that we need to take a look at. And maybe it's a workshop down the line. Hey, um, for our BCTLA um, um, organizers, also, we have our workshop that follows that um, indicates how we can collaborate with teachers. Yes, if you want to join us. Yeah, if you want to join us for our workshop afterwards, we'll delve a little deeper into a few of the things that we touched on today. And to finish it off, there is the Google uh, spreadsheet where you can pop your ideas in. Please open that up on the side and then just keep it open and you can go and visit it again afterwards. And again, to wrap up, if you are feeling overwhelmed about all of this, reach out to us. Um, we're, we're, I'm always happy to hear. I love hearing from people from around the province who have come to workshops or maybe just had a chat with me at the conference. Uh, and I know Marilyn and Devika as well um, are super open for to help answer any questions or any support that you need. Or if you're just feeling overwhelmed, please send us an email um, or track me down at my school. I'm happy to, to, to help out as well. Okay. Thank you very much to Keely, Dev, and Marilyn for an excellent keynote.